um, Purdue University. And again, my name is Dana Katori. So this is a great, I think, that is um, kind of shows that the college selection processes can be very overwhelming. I think especially so for uh, you all in Brazil, um, you're looking at schools, you know, potentially thousands of miles away, you know, in a different country culture, uh, different language, you know, and there's these terms and, um, you know, the process can seem, I think, very overwhelming because it, it, it um, is very different than the college application process in Brazil and other parts of the world. Um, so we're going to talk about that, you know, that process and try to make the search process a little bit more overwhelming. Um, so there's five things here. Um, oh, someone's wanting to join. Let me just allow that real quick few more people. I think a few more people just we're just getting started here and we're talking about college selection or college research process. So welcome um, to the chat that we're having that tonight. So these are I think the five considerations that kind of encompass a, a lot of a lot of when you're looking at a college five things that you should look at first and then after that you narrow them down um, into figuring out if these things are going to be the best fit for you. So when we talk about looking for college, we talk a lot about, you know, finding the best fit. Um, so some of these, so um, this, this list that I have um, is in no particular order. Some of these things may be important to you. Some of them may not be important to you. Um, so I think this is determining, determining um, is this factor in the college search process important to me or is it not important to me? And it'll be different from person to person whether um, the college is really important or if it's not important. And I'll give examples of all of these. And while I'm talking about them and giving examples to them, um, just think of, you know, do I relate to this or is this important to me or not? And again, these are in no particular order um, at all. Okay, there we are. Uh, so the first thing is programs or major. So in the United States, um, we call what you want to study a major. So um, let me allow another person to join. Um, so we call um, what you want to study a major. So a lot of times at the very first questions, if I'm talking to a student that they'll come up and ask me, um, do you have this major or, you know, do you have engineering? Do you have communications? Do you have um, psychology? Uh, so the, the list goes on. And of course, if my answer is no, then obviously my school is not going to be a good um, or shouldn't be considering that college. So that's probably the first uh, um, thing. And this is probably the first um, thing that most students ask. The um, Obviously, if you they don't have your major, you're not going to want to study at that institution. If you say, you know, do I want to my answer is yes, then you may want to ask a little bit more about that. Major. And, um, and look at the reputation or the ranking of the school's program within that certain area. And if you're looking at the college's website, you know, look to learn a little bit more about the major and figure out what students are and what, um, uh, and if you can see yourself being a student and studying that major at that college or university. Uh, so major, this one's very straightforward. Um, and it's definitely the, always the first question I always get asked from students um, if I have a major. Um, obviously, there's some majors in the United States that are very popular. So if you're interested, I would say in business or communication or the sciences, most colleges or universities in the United States will offer those majors um, nine times out of ten. But then there's other ones that may be a little bit more. So architecture, um, maybe some um, majors like engineering, a little more specific. Uh, that you may have a little bit harder time finding. Obviously, if you're looking for schools for a certain major that is a little bit more unique, um, certainly do an online search and things will pop up. And resources that you have um, to learn about majors um, in the United States. If you don't have a major or if you're completely undecided um, what you want to study, that's completely fine. Um, most colleges and universities in the United States, at least, um, you can undecided student. So if you have multiple interest or if you are completely undecided, um, that is completely fine to just go ahead I as an undecided major and then you can choose what major you want to study once you're um, at the or once you are studying in your first year or second year at the end. 
I know that's specific to the U.S. Um, other areas or other countries may be a little bit different, but in the U.S. it's completely fine to be undecided at most colleges and universities. And then the thing, if you have multiple interests, the beautiful thing about the um, education system in the United States is that if you, you know, are a business major, but you have an interest in, say, psychology, um, you can take a few classes in psychology or maybe even have a minor major in psychology and that goes across all disciplines um, so it's very one well, that's something I think that's very unique about the US education system is if you have multiple interests um, you can uh, study um, multiple things where some countries the education system may be a little more straightforward if that's all you're gonna be studying is engineering so that is um, a little bit about programs and majors and that is something um, probably most likely the first thing you'll look at when you're looking at colleges and universities Go to the next. Okay, so the next one is location. Um, so this one's a little bit more, I think, vague. Um, again, some of you, location will be very important. For example, if you have friends or family in the United States or um, in Europe or in a other city in Brazil and you want to attend college there and be close to the friends or family, then maybe location is very important to you. So, you know, I have friends in. I have friends in San Francisco. I'm going to look at colleges in the San Francisco and California so I can be close to friends or family. Um, that's one of, I think, one of the main reasons location would be very important. Um, other than that, um, I think for you that are, those of you that are considering multiple countries, um, maybe, maybe country is most important for you or your top or second choice um, first. And then within that country, maybe figure out the reason or whatnot. Um, the U.S. is a very large country, um, just like Brazil, uh, very similar, you know, so we have different regions, different cultures, values, just like for you in Brazil, um, you know, people in Recife are different than the people in Sao Paulo. So um, there's just, you know, such a variety of difference. Obviously, um, I think getting once, if you, once you decide you want to maybe go to the U.S., get familiar with the United States and maybe which ones would be a good fit for you. Again, so this is maybe this location may not be an important factor for many of you, unless you maybe have friends or family or a certain region of the U.S. or country that you already have your heart set on. I encourage you to be very open-minded um, when it comes to exploring different regions and different parts of the world um, to go for your college education. Um, another consideration within those regions: consider um, the weather and climate. Um, again, be very open-minded about that. But yes, the weather um, will be. United States than Brazil. Um, we are in, today's our first day of summer here in um, in the United States, whereas you guys are um, in the middle of what you would um, call your winter season. So that is something that would be different about the, um, the United States. And then all, um, so those are the things that I'll take into consideration. Of course, the northern U.S. and Canada um, are going to be cooler than the south um, southern United States as far as the weather and climate. But again, I would encourage you to be very open-minded um, when it comes to considering location unless you already have some other reason to look at colleges in a specific region or area. The next big question, <laughs> that's always, you know, what, what, how much is um, and that is, I think, a big one when you're t making that college selection process or researching colleges. Uh, you should you know, asking, do you offer scholarships? Do you offer what's how much is it going to cost? Um, I think maybe one of the more confusing topics, especially for international students um, with the U.S. system, that some schools have scholarship. It's it's not you know, school per, or the United States has over 3,000 colleges, and each one of them is different. So again, this can be very a very overwhelming. And, um, but my recommendation would be for uh, the price and cost is to have at least a rough estimate or an idea of how much uh, you um, can afford to spend. So it may be having a conversation um, with your um, parents or whoever will be sponsoring you for your education. And just getting a rough estimate of how much afford per year. So some of you, this may be a very important factor. And then some of you who are, uh, you know, have better means to pay for college, um, maybe this is an important factor for you and it doesn't really matter what, you know, how much the school costs. 
But if you have an idea of how much ideally you can afford to spend per year um, or would like to, that is something I think that's a good. Looking at colleges, you can write off the bet, no, yes, this college is going to be a good fit for me financially or not. Um, you're making those cost comparisons, I always recommend taking into consideration total cost. So tuition um, in the U.S., we have what we call tuition, what we would pay for a college or university for education. Then you offer, which is your accommodations, your housing, uh, what you're paying for your, your housing and your meals while you're on campus. And some schools will have additional cost fees and others the additional fees. Um, programs, things like that will be included with tuition. Um, so always take into consideration total cost when you're making those comparisons. And then if you are getting scholarship opportunities, of course, it's going to be on the total cost. Some schools have scholarship opportunities and are very straightforward about that. Some of them you won't know what scholarships you'll qualify for until after you're admitted. Some of them have special application processes. Um, so that's get, getting familiar with the schools you're interested in and what their fee structure is. And um, I see we have a question we'll get to talking about Purdue later. So thank you for the question about majors. We'll talk about that in a little bit. All that pop up. Um, and so, yeah, so scholarship opportunities can be very confusing. Also, um, when you're Think about the cost of living um, for the area of the schools that you're looking at as well. Obviously, you're coming to the U.S. and you're going to be spending, you know, um, if you go out to eat with friends or if you're getting an off-campus apartment, um, think about that in the consideration as well. So, um, for example, if I was to go out for out to eat in, say, New York City, I may tw pay $25, $30 for a meal I'm at a restaurant, whereas if I went um, here in the Midwest, I may pay $10. So think about the differences there um, when you're making those decisions. And the next one, um, size and student population. And this one may be important to some of you, and some of you, it may not matter. Um, so there's, like I said, th over 3,000 universities. And of course, if you're considering um, other countries for education, it, or um, you're going to be adding number of all the different options you have areas and places to study. Um, so in the U.S. there's a there's a whole variety of schools. We have there's large schools, there's schools that are in a large city, there's schools that are in the middle of nowhere America, there are schools that have 70,000 students, there are schools that have a thousand students. So um, knowing yourself, you, you may and you may be looking at a certain type of school. Um, for example, I grew up in a very rural area um, and went to a very small high school. And I knew if I went to a large city or if I went to a large university, I would be very overwhelmed. I don't think I arrived academically or socially. Uh, so I opted at looking for smaller schools and for schools that may not be in a, a larger environment because I knew that would be a better fit for me. Um, so think of yourself in your own situation and what type of environment you thrive in and environment is important to you or that you would like to experience. Again, you can be very open-minded about this. It's important to you if you um, want to go have that you know, college experience in the United States, and you may want to go to a suburban or a rural area um, rather than a city. So again, just be very open-minded, but also think about yourself and which areas may be important to you. At the bottom, I have three pictures here of examples of the differences in schools in the U.S. So um, all the way, um, the first picture on the screen is a Catholic University in western New York. And it's St. Bonaventure University. They have about uh, 2,000 students on their campus. Again, it's in a, in a uh, more of a rural center, a rural area. The middle picture there is actually Purdue University, the university with or represent and work for. And again, we're a kind of a large public university, um, but we're located in or a more um, a small city, essentially. And then the last picture there is UCLA. So they're located in a large city, you know, down in Los Angeles, and you'd be in a larger environment. So those are some things that when you're researching colleges, things that you may want to know um, what type of university it is. And then the last um, thing to take into consideration is just personal preferences. So what's important to you may for looking at colleges may not be important for the next person. So a few examples of this, um, well, the school type, we just talked about that, that I showed a different 
public universities, private universities. Um, in the United States, there are several thousands Catholic universities or Christian universities. So if that's very important to you and you want to be in that one of those environments, um, then you're going to opt to look for those those. Um, and so that's maybe a personal preference that you're looking for only those type of schools. Um, for my, for actually my situation, an example of that, I went to a Christian high school and I decided um, was looking at all. And decided, you know what, I think I want to go to a Christian college as well. Uh, so I opted for that and um, was looking more specifically at Christian colleges, but did consider other opportunity uh, options as well. So extra clicker activities. So obviously you're coming the United States to study um, to study a major or um, a specific um, specific thing, but also you're going to have time outside of um, outside time outside of the classroom to get involved on campus and you know have a social life as well. So if you are you know involved with extracurriculars um, in high school or want to be in college, you can always do that as well. So if you if sports and football or um, soccer is very important to you. Um, learn about those opportunities at the college or university that, that you're or say you're involved with dance or band or music um, or you want to do volunteer and do social work on social justice issues. Just little things like that that you're interested in. You can make sure that um, that's a very important part of an aspect of your life and your experience. Um, especially in the United States as a big part of the college experience. So make sure that your schools that you're looking at um, have those opportunities and um, can support support you while you're So for example, at Purdue, we have over a thousand different clubs and organizations. No matter what you're interested in, uh, actually I have a picture of our robotics club at the bottom of the screen here. So even if you're interested in robotics um, or anything that has to do with your um, heritage or religion or sports, um, hobbies, or activities, um, you can be involved with here at Purdue. Um, so that's just something to learn about those, um, learn about those things that you're interested in um, along with the academics and everything else. If it's really important to you, I would really encourage you to do that. <laughs> And then also, you know, learning about the um, if you want to be in a environment, we kind of talked about that. That's again, that's a personal preference and special program. So if there's maybe you see a school has a neat program, um, that may be a preference to find a school that has a program. For example, Purdue has a great entrepreneurship program. Um, any student of any major can be entrepreneurship program. Um, so that is something that's a personal preference as well. Um, study abroad, I think, is a when I was looking at colleges, study abroad was important. Um, so I was looking at special programs or study abroad programs that would allow me to study abroad. Um, for you, that for those of you who are coming from Brazil, um, even though you're an international student, being abroad in the United States, if you want to do a semester in Europe or Australia or Asia or anywhere in the world, um, you can do that. In States um, through the study abroad option. So most college and universities have excellent out, um, study abroad offices, and that is something that you would have the opportunity to do if you're in states and study as well. So that is the kind of five considerations um, that I came up with, and of course, there's again some of them, as I talked about them. Some of them you're thinking is not important to me and so others of you are thinking yes it is or you know cost is very important some of you um, have more means and it's not important to you so um, that's my recommendation I think is to look at those and figure out which ones are important to you and which ones are not some of you are going to be very open-minded and have lots of opportunities narrow down your options and you're going to figure out which you know which schools are going to be um, make more sense for you to apply to and make more sense to figure out which schools are going to be the best fit for you so those are the types of things that I, that I would highly recommend um, when you're researching and looking at um, to get a sense of what what those are and how they fit into your um, your search. So some takeaways, just some quick recommendations. Um, definitely take advantage of your high school guidance counselors and the resources and their advice. Um, Annie, who is putting together this webinar for you, and you know, it's part of her job to help you through this process, um, make it seem less overwhelming. Um, it's help you know her job to provide those that advice and resources for you when you your situation um, and help you all throughout the application process. 
Also, take advantage of the colleges or universities that you're interested in. Um, each college and university, especially in the United States at least, has an, um, generally called an admissions office, and it's their job um, to answer any questions that you have about the university, their job to help you through that entire admissions process and um, help you figure out if their university is the right fit for you or not and don't um, be shy when you're interacting with recruiters and admissions offices because uh, um, that's our job. Um, also, other resources that you may have in Brazil, um, you have Education USA offices. Thinking of the United States, those are free resources and offices that you can use as well as you're going through the search and research process. Obviously, Research is something that I would highly recommend. Um, obviously, that's kind of the main one nowadays. I know it can be a little bit overwhelming because your websites and they all look the same. They all sound the same. We're all same things. Um, but I think if you some of those tips that I gave you tonight as far as um, the location and price and the major list size and location of schools, if you um, those would be the main things, the first things that you look at. Um, and if the school seems appealing to you, you may want to do a little, dig a little bit deeper and see if they have some of your personal preferences and things like that. Um, find you know schools that you think you maybe won't be a good fit for. Um, get familiar with that school's admissions requirements and their deadlines. Um, that's what I would recommend. Uh, just get familiar with those recommendations and the requirements and deadlines. Um, each school like different requirements. Each school has different deadlines. So you're going to want to keep track of all of that because um, the deadlines in the U.S. can be very strict. For example, if you miss, you know, Purdue, we have a early action deadline for some of our programs. The strict deadline of November one, November two. Unfortunately, your application is going to be um, most likely not considered. So again. Be familiar with that. Become familiar with the SAT or ACT if it's required or not. Um, obviously, many of you will have to take the TOEFL or the English um, proficiency exam. So just be prepared as you're going through that process. Um, and that is so. That's another thing when you're looking at universities, get a sense of what they're. What they're um, take online virtual tours. Obviously, you're unable to visit schools um, that are overseas. Uh, so. Most colleges and universities now will have online virtual tours, so I know Purdue does. If you're unable to visit campus, you can kind of get a sense of what the campus looks like and feels like in some of the facilities that we offer at Purdue. And there's also college search websites. Um, college, um, collegeboard.org is one that comes to mind. Search you know, any school in the US, and it, they will kind of compare and contrast the differences um, of those universities. And next, we're going to kind of jump into um, Purdue specific. Um, if there's questions about anything that I said about researching colleges or the considerations that you should be taking, um, or any if there are anything that maybe something that I mentioned and should have talked a little bit more about, mention, um, just let me know and we can talk about those things now. Uh, I think you did a great overview. Um, okay. <clears throat> maybe once we get into Purdue specifically, there might okay. be some things related to the search criteria in Purdue, which might be mm -hmm. interesting okay. to to, um, to detail. Okay. Yep. So let's jump into that now. I know there's a few Purdue specific questions that popped up, and those will get answered as we move forward now. And um, We'll answer those questions as we go. So it sounds like more of the questions are specific to Purdue. And as we're going through the talking about Purdue, we'll actually answer some of those questions or considerations that I should take. So it gives you kind of an example of um, the types of things you should be looking at when you're looking at colleges. So we'll move forward. And I am going to show just a quick motion first. Um, hopefully the internet speeds and connections don't slow this down too much, um, but if you're unable to, if it, if it worked out quite well, um, this video is on YouTube and you'll be able to watch it at a later time. So let's play that right now. Do a example of what Purdue kind of looks like and some of the things um, Purdue is known for.
I don't think the sound is on this time. Oh, is there? It on? The video is playing, but I don't hear anything. Good to know. Thanks, Annie. Um, Are you wearing headphones? I am. That's probably it, and I was not earlier. That's probably exactly it. Let's just try this, and if it doesn't work, we'll. There you go. It's okay. good. It's good. Sorry about that. Guys. and mechanics. Today, home to over 200 majors, more than 36,000 students, and thousands of research projects each year. We are a nationally ranked and globally high school, Mass Dab in the Midwest, drawing students from more than 125 different countries, and creating a network of more than 450,000 alumni around the globe. We didn't choose Purdue because we thought it would be easy. We because we knew it was going to be hard. We are inventors and dreamers. We are solvers and doers. We plant our feet in the earth as we reach all the way to the moon. We believe that trains can be mascots. Fountains should be and that cell towers were meant to be built one brick higher. We are boiler makers. Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm back. Perfect. So hopefully the video worked. If it didn't, um, we'll get you the link and watch that at another time. Uh, so the video, yeah, basically explains, I think, what it, uh, it gives you a good sense of what it means a Purdue student and what it means to be a, what, a Boilermaker. A Boilermaker is, uh, is Purdue's nickname. Um, so we call it the Boilermakers. And basically, um, the nickname was given to us back when the university was founded because um, Purdue students were known to be inventors. They worked on engines and they were known to be um, innovators. And that's what a, uh, a Boilermaker back in that time was a person who worked on engines. Be, you know, being a Boilermaker, being a Purdue student um, certainly means so much more than that. And that is, um, gives you a little bit idea of kind of the background of it. Um, so Purdue University, uh, we are a large public research institution. We currently have over 40,000 students studying on our campus. Majority of them are undergraduate students. So undergraduate students are students, you know, that are out of high school, so they come out of high school and they get their bachelor's degree. Um, in the United States, both um, we have a question that just popped up, and I'll be answering that in a few more slides. Um, and we are, uh, yeah, so we're a large public research, um, 40,000 students, majority at undergraduate level, and um, we were named for John Purdue. He was a local donated his farmland to found the university um, when the university was founded in 1869. Uh, this uh, screen looks Wyoming, and uh, it, but it shows our location. So again, well, you know, one of the things you're taking into consideration right off the bat, um, where are you located? And that's always a popular question when I um, meet with students. Um, so we are located about two hours south 
Chicago, um, which is currently the third largest city in the United States. And we are located about one hour north of the city of Indianapolis. Um, so we're located um, in a smaller city, um, area um, than maybe what you're used to if you're living in Sao Paulo, definitely. Um, but we have the population of the West Lafayette area is about 175,000 uh, people. Um, but Purdue, we have over 40,000 students. So again, to Purdue, you're really getting that full um, U.S. college experience. Um, and you'll be on our campus, and everything that you probably do for your three years will be on our campus or related or nearby our campus. This is a page of our brochure. If you're unable to read it, um, we do have the, our brochure, our admissions guide on our website. Um, we're in the process of updating it, and I'll definitely get a copy of that to Annie so she can distribute to you, or you can get it from her or I um, at the end of this. Purdue, we very much consider ourselves an international university, one of the largest international student populations of any college or university in the United States. So we are currently in the top 10 for international students attendance in the United States. And of public universities, we're currently ranked number four. Um, so we, uh, it's a very much an international environment on our campus. Um, so this is something that um, maybe be uh, a preference of yours. So when you're thinking about the personal preferences you have that I mentioned, one of those may be, do I want to go to a, a college university where there's a large number and diversity of international students? Do I want to go to a school where I may be the only Brazilian student on that campus? Um, so that's, again, a personal preference. If you want to, um, it's really up to you what type of environment you want to be in. But those are some of the things that you can think about as well um, when you're making those decisions making those decisions. And to answer the student who asked the question about how many Brazilian students we have. Uh, currently, all these numbers were as of last fall. We take account a uh, census of our students every fall. Um, currently, or as of last fall, we had 43 total Brazilian citizens studying at Purdue. And um, there's the breakdown graduate students and 43 were graduate students. I will say that our numbers from Brazil are increasing every year. In coming class, we have, 20, we have 24 Brazilians coming in our incoming class. They'll be starting in August. And of course, that's just doubling the size of our undergraduate student population that we have already. So probably this fall we'll have closer to, I would say, 60 to 70 Brazilian citizens on our campus. So um, that is, I think, it's probably, um, it may not seem, you're looking at the total number of students from at the entire university. Um, however, I think if you are starting to look at other colleges and universities, um, it, it is probably one of the larger Brazilian citizen populations of any college or university in the U.S. Um, Do has a very active student association or BRASA. Uh, that is a, a student association that are on many in the United States, and they have a um, they they meet up and go to conventions and things with other Brazilian students that are in the U.S. as well. Um, but we have a very active association. Actually, the picture on the screen is um, a group of our Brazilian of the Brasa Association um, at one of their gatherings this past year. So, so those students um, they kind of you know keep that Brazilian culture alive here in the United States, so they may meet up to watch the soccer or football games um, that, you know, the, those big matches. Um, they may meet up to have um, a Brazilian meeting. Um, and they also, you know, are, you know, the representative of Brazil on campus. So even the U.S. citizens who maybe have an interest in Portuguese or have an interest in Brazil, they can join the, you know, the Brazil. Um, Brazilian Student Association as well. It's also a way for you to bring Brazil to the U.S. and educate uh, people in the U.S. about Brazil. So um, some of the things that the student club is, but they are a very active group. I met with their um, one of their students who um, this past year, and he's very active in the club and organization. And they also assist us with um, representing Purdue um, when they as well. Also, I found when researching this uh, presentation that we also have a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu club. So that if that's something you're interested in, that's something that we would. As I mentioned earlier, we have over a thousand different clubs and organizations. So anything you can think of, you're interested in, if it's um, to relate with sports, 
um, music or dance or academic, those are extracurricular activities you can be involved with as well. Uh, questions pop up on the screen, you know, what can I study at Purdue? And of course, major, that's a, one of the top things that you're going to be looking at um, to see if Purdue has the major or what you want to study. Um, so at Purdue, the great news is we have over 200 majors. So no matter what you want to study, most likely we do offer it. Of the, you know, very few majors, we offer um, uh, over 200 different areas of study. Uh, they are not all listed. This broke down um, with the colleges or the area of study that they fall under. You can see the complete list, right? Or if, um, you have a specific major in mind and you want to know, you can clear it. We can clarify at the end of this if it's something that we offer or not. Um, but our College of Engineering, uh, Purdue uh, is, I would say, STEM-oriented school, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But we do offer um, majors that are even ranked outside of that, that area. So um, Engineering is a very popular at Purdue. Um, we are it's a top ranked program in the U.S. I think we're currently ranked number nine engineering schools in the United States. So, uh, um, but it also is a great program. We have over sixteen. We have about sixteen different areas of engineering. So within engineering, you're, if you're thinking, you know, uh, I'm interested in industrial or mechanical or electrical or computer, um, there's sixteen different areas. Of uh, engineering that we do offer here at Purdue. And for a complete list, you can find on our website or we can talk, um, answer those questions into this. Within our College of Health and Human Sciences, um, some very neat majors within there. So obviously the health sciences, so think nutrition, dietetic, um, athletic training. Um, and then for the human sciences side, think hospitality, tourism management. Actually, Marriott, the hotel company, has a building on our campus, and it's a working laboratory for students who are going to go into the hospitality or tourism industry. Uh, also, um, on the human sciences side, um, there's also um, business-related majors, so think marketing and financial um, planning, things like that. Uh, College of Science is pretty straightforward. So your run-of-the-mill science majors, um, so think biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics. Our computer science major um, is also out of our College of Science. And um, so there's a whole list of majors that are very interesting within our College of Science. The Technic Institute, um, that one clearly has the most unique name up there. And um, Polytechnic, um, all the programs there are, all these programs that I mentioned are four-year bachelor degree programs. Um, the po Polytechnic Institute is actually our college technology. And they have a, a whole host of variety of majors and very unique and cool majors in that as well. So they have, um, so think aviation airports. So if you want to become a private or, or a professional pilot, those things you can train to do at Purdue. Um, if you want to work in the aviation industry, they have majors within there. Um, anything to do with, I would say, so think computers. Um, they have, obviously, drones or unmanned aerial systems is a new craze now. So they have a major dedication to drone um, unmanned aerial systems. They have majors in animation and gaming. and. Um, they have majors. Um, there's just so there's so many cool graphic technology, um, engineering technology. So um, there's a, a large conglomerate of majors within technology. Um, so there's another new popular one within that um, within the Purdue Polytechnic as well. We have a College of Liberal Arts. Uh, liberal arts, um, popular majors within that college, uh, think communications, think industrial design or interior design, and also uh, any languages, anything about the languages or the arts, those would all um, be considered within the liberal arts. College of Agriculture um, is very common at Purdue. We actually have one of the highest ranked colleges of agriculture in the United States. I know many of you, when you think agriculture, oh, I have to be a farmer or have a farming background. Um, no, that's not the case at all. Um, there's the business side of agriculture, so we have agricultural business and agricultural economics. Um, there is the food science side of agriculture, so 
are interested in working in the food industry or passionate about that. That's within the College of Agriculture. And then also we have um, um, agricultural engineering, which is in the College of Agriculture. And then there's also um, unique majors like zoology and um, landscape ar architecture is a very unique major that we offer as well. The School of Management, which would be our business school. So think, you know, the, the mainstream business majors, management, um, economics, finance, accounting, marketing. Those are the majors within our School of Management. And then laboratory studies is our program for undecided students. I talked a lot earlier about being undecided and how that's completely okay, um, especially when you're applying to Purdue, it's completely fine. Um, that program, you'll come in as an undecided student. And it's designed to help you um, figure out what you, what area we want to go to of, of our 200 majors, which one's going to be the best fit for you. Um, if you do are part of the exploratory services program, you have the opportunity to transition to any one of the 200 majors um, that we offer. Um, at Purdue, do have the opportunity to change their major. So if you start out in, say, the as a marketing major. Oh, this isn't the best fit for me. Um, I want to study computer science instead. We do have a process where you can go ahead and change your major. So once you are starting out, you're not locked into that. You can change, and most students do change or switch um, one or two times uh, as they figure out which career is going to be the best fit for them. If you're thinking of being a teacher, we have the College of Education, um, which teaches, which basically um, you're preparing to be a usually a high school teacher or an elementary or um, elementary teacher. And then we have a college, a great uh, pharmacy program um, here at Purdue. So if you want to be a pharmacist, that's an awesome program. And then we also have a um, school of veterinary medicine for uh, students who want to become a vet. So that's an uh, overview of all the majors. Please wonder is on our website, um, and I will answer any specific questions later about that. Uh, this screen is also another uh, screenshot from our brochure, um, our admissions guide. And it's on our website, and again, I'll get the link to Annie to distribute um, that she can get it to you. And this just kind of shows that Purdue University in the United States um, that we highlight some of the programs, not all the programs that are that we have ranked, but we highlight some of them that we find interesting and like to share. Um, and it's think about so number three best school for English majors you know who would have thought Purdue you know a stem oriented school of all things has an awesome English program um, or things like landscape architecture or hospitality tours and management uh, so again I think unique majors that Purdue offers uh, that people don't know about and then um, and we also have uh, the stem majors are always highly ranked as well. So again, we're a top ranked university. No matter what you choose to study, you're going to come out with a world-class degree um, to um, be successful. Uh, so real quick, application process. Um, it's very straightforward. And again, I won't go into too many details, um, but we are part of the common application. So if you're familiar with the or any applying to U.S. colleges in the U.S., our students apply for the application we do have an application fee of we do have an application fee of sixty dollars uh, we do require you to submit transcripts um, from your high school if you are on the Brazilian if you're going to a Brazilian school we'll translate the grades and everything into the US equivalency here in our office um, we require you to submit proof of English proficiency so usually a TOEFL or an IELTS um, is what we prefer we highly recommend that you take the SAT or ACT as well, and then you are um, recommended to do a letter of recommendation, but it's not. So that's just the application process in a nutshell. Um, is, if there's any questions about that, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Can I make you confirm? You don't, so you don't require the SAT, ACT? Yeah. Re so highly recommended, highly recommended. So we require our requirements at Purdue. We require the proof of English proficiency. So the TOEFL um, is required. You can get English proficiency through the SAT or ACT without the TOEFL. Actually, well, but I would still recommend that you do the TOEFL. Um, ACT highly, highly recommended. If you're applying to a competitive program at Purdue, so think engineering, computer science, 
um, even in the School of Management. If you're applying to those majors, it's highly recommended that you do have an SAT or ACT because most uh, will, most students who are applying to Purdue do have those um, credentials. And that's going to, if you don't have it, it will weaken, I would say, your application. Um, so most students have the SAT or ACT. Again, highly, highly recommended. It is possible to get without them. Um, but again, if you want your application to be competitive, it really depends on the major that you're applying to um, when you are being considered with not having a or ACT or not. What about SAT 2? Would you, okay, let's, because we have sometimes mm -hmm. this, you know, the, the, our students tend to test better on SAT 2s, right, than the mm -hmm. SAT 1 and ACT. Mm -hmm. So we obviously encourage them to do both. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in the case of some certain universities that don't, don't require the SAT or ACT, we actually say send your SAT 2 subjects. So okay. for, in this case, what would, would you say still send your SAT or an ACT, even though yeah. it may be weaker than your SAT 2s? Correct. I would suggest that you send everything. Um, we don't require at Purdue the um, of course, if you do submit them to us, it, we do receive them. It does go on your application. Um, we don't put as much, I guess, weight on those, but if you do have them, I think that's good. Um, for the SAT and ACT, when we're looking at it, we're really looking at the breakdown of the score, the overall score. So, for example, the evidence-based reading and writing, and we're not going to put as much weight on um, as the math. The math section is the one that we're really looking at, um, for, especially for our management program, computer science, engineering. We're going to be looking at that math section. We're going to be putting much more weight on that than the evidence-based um, reading and writing. Um, but yeah, I would recommend that you submit all your scores to us, and uh, whether it's subject test or not. If you do take the subject tests um, for Purdue, again, since it's not required, um, we don't. It's possible to get admitted without them. It may or may not make it. It most likely won't make much of a difference in the outcome of your application. Um, we would prefer to uh, see the SAT or ACT. Um, application timeline. Um, so at Purdue, this is the application timeline for next fall. So if you're applying for fall or August of 2018, um, then you'll begin that process um, within two months. You can start that process. So if you're a senior in high school or going to be a senior in high school um, this coming year um, is when you would be you know, going through. So if you're on the Brazilian system and graduating this December, um, you'll start this process right at the end of your senior year. Uh, so we are... Um, our application opens on August 1st. This year we have an early action uh, application deadline of November 1st. If you apply during the early action, um, you'll receive your decision uh, on January 15th. Um, if you missed, if you apply on, uh, didn't complete your application on November, after November, um, but before January 1st, you'll receive your decision in mid-March. So um, we are on a early application um, program. Uh, again, I have these terms may be a little bit foreign um, if you're not familiar with the education US. But again, in a nutshell, um, I would encourage you to apply by November 1st, and um, that will be the best, um, especially if you're applying to program, for best results applying to Purdue and for best consideration, um, I would recommend completing that application process. Um, Completing the application by November 1. Um, when you see the deadlines here, that means completing the application. Uh, that means that we need to have your transcripts and your SAT or ACT score by that date. So it doesn't mean submitting the application on October 31st. Unfortunately, if you do that, um, you may miss the deadline. So again, start early and make sure that your application is complete um, before, the, before the deadline. Um, you see that we have an honors college. That um, If you're interested in honors college, um, that's basically a, a program that we have at Purdue that is for honor students. So if you um, if academics are very important to you, if research and um, scholarly projects and being involved with other honor students is important to you, then you may want to consider our honors college. You can learn more about that on our website, or we can you know, I can answer further detailed questions if that's what you're interested in. Um, Scholarships at Purdue, we do not have any scholarships for international students. So if you're a U.S. citizen resident of the United States, um, you can be considered for scholarships if you complete the application by November 1. Um, but if you're an international student or not a U.S. citizen, 
don't offer any scholarship opportunities. And, and I was just talking about so always one of the first question is, and that's, you know, one that you should be asking is, as we talked about earlier, you know, how much does it cost or what is the tuition and rate on that? So at Purdue, our tuition is currently right around, um, actually our total cost, so we talked about total cost of tuition, room and board, everything is about 45,000 US dollars per academic year. And unfortunately, we do not offer any scholarships um, or financial international students. Um, while students study at Purdue, you may have the opportunity to receive a small scholarship based on how you're doing academically through your um, department or your, the major that you're studying. But in most cases, um, international students should expect to be the, the full tuition and fees. Uh, so that's right around 45,000 US dollars per academic year. Um, something unique about Purdue's tuition, it has remained the same. Um, students are paying the same, actually less now than they were in the year 2012. Um, so our tuition and uh, fees have been frozen, um, and they are, will be frozen for the next uh, two years. Um, that is something that we will um, continue to do to make it as affordable as possible. Um, Annie, the I-20 cost uh, is major, but it typically is between 45 and 48,000 US dollars. And someone else asked a question earlier, so we're kind of in the time I think where we can take questions. Um, about Purdue or about the search process or anything really. Someone asked earlier, early on, can you live off campus at Purdue? Um, the answer to the question is yes. Purdue does not require you to live off campus at any point, um, even your first year. Um, of course, it's highly, highly recommended that you do live on campus at least your first year. And then after that, you can move off campus. But Purdue, there's a lot of off-campus housing opportunities. There's tons of housing right off campus. It's affordable as well. Purdue has its own bus system um, and goes into the local community, so it's easy around um, the campus in the local area. Um, so no, you do not need to live on campus at any point. So that was a question that came up earlier. Do people have a, do people, do, you, do the students have a preference? Is it, is, it a, is it a campus where most students like to live on campus or, or off campus? Yeah. What's the sort of day to day? Definitely. So I would say we do provide housing all four years. So if you want to live on campus all four years, you're more than welcome to. If you don't, that's fine. I would say it's common for students to stay on campus. Um, and, you can, and, and you can do both. If you move off campus, you can move back on campus. So you really have the flexibility at Purdue to do what you want and what's most convenient for you. I would say most students live on campus at least their first year. After you have a small group of friends and you want to move off campus and uh, get an apartment together, that may be the best fit for you. Or um, you put together on campus. So it, it really is a, a mix. Um, you really have the opportunity. Um, like I said, Purdue has a lot of uh, campus housing that's practically on campus. It's basically across the street. You won't even know it was off campus housing. Um, but it's really up to you. If you do move off campus, you cannot have a meal plan. So many students, I think, maybe. It, um, stay on campus because they have that sense of having a meal plan and just being able to go to the dining hall and swipe and it's all included and they don't have to worry about cooking. Um, but we'll, if you're going to have an apartment and you're going to have a small kitchen area um, where you can buy food or whatnot, and you will still have the flexibility to um, pay for meals at the dining hall. So even though you don't have a meal plan, you can still go and eat at the dining hall and dining court. So again, it's um, I would say Purdue is much community um, than not. Um, most students live on campus or practically on camp, uh, off campus. So even if you live off campus, you're still going to be very close to campus. Any other questions? Feel free to type them in or if I missed one, I'm not sure if I can. Do I have a question about about sort of after college? Do most people tend to stay in the region, or do they do they move away? Where do where do your students go after college? That's a good question. And actually, there was a question that popped up that I, I was talking about one of the topics that was um, related to that. And they the student had asked, um, what companies do Purdue students go to work for? What companies are popular for students to go work for? So 
right along with that. I would say majority of students do leave the region or local area of Purdue after graduation. Um, uh, Purdue, I mean, we are a smaller city, so opportunities are a little more limited, but um, certainly there are um, companies here that Purdue students can work for and do. So, for example, um, Rolls-Royce just opened a building on campus um, in conjunction with Purdue. So we have a partnership with Rolls-Royce and they are working on building jet engines um, for the next basically generation. So that's something that's cool and happening on Purdue when students can be involved with that. Um, the company for GE has strong partnerships with the university and has does a lot of research on our campus. Um, same goes for Boeing, the airplane. Uh, or airline or aviation in the aviation in industry. Um, so, and the Subaru, the car company, has a manufacturing plant in Lafayette, so the local area, which also provides a lot of opportunities for students. Caterpillar, um, they have um, offices here in the local area as well. I would say majority of our students, um, when they graduate, do tend to go to um, larger cities or larger companies to work. Um, many of our students will kind of make their way to the west coast to Silicon Valley, um, especially our computer science kids because that's, you know, where all the tech companies are and, um, you know, and so that's where I think they're But again, I feel like they spread out all over the world. As far as companies, um, it's actually in our, um, our brochure here that I have in front of me. This is also on our website. Um, so. Um, that our students are going to work for, yeah, are some of the ones I just named listed in here, Boeing, Caterpillar, um, Coca-Cola, DuPont, Eli Lilly, um, General Electric, Apple, Google, Amazon, um, yeah, Rolls-Royce. So big name companies, international companies from all around the world are on our campus students. And these companies do have a presence on our office or in, on our campus. And they are um, here to recruit our students because they know the talent of our students in, um, here at Purdue. So, I think, uh, all right. Well, I guess do you. Uh, there are no questions. If not, we can we can wrap it up. If it's it's, uh, I don't want you to be too late. Um, let me just. I'm going to take control over a little bit, unless you yeah, have anything ahead. else to show. Yeah. No. Go, uh, just no. because I just want to show the students something um, in terms of the the the, the Braza. Uh, I'm going to. Então, vou falar em português um pouquinho, mesmo se meu, meu português é ruim. Só para <coughs> ver que aqui, uh, no site de Facebook, tem muitos recursos legais para você... Pra, não é só para Purdue, right? There's lots of um, Facebook groups, né? Uh, mas, especificamente, porque nós conversamos sobre Purdue, só para te mostrar que uh, ele mencionou Brasa, né? the, the, the Purdue uh, Brazil chapter. And all you know, pretty much all universities, guys, has like a Brasa chapter now, and their Brazilians are very mobilized. So if you want to research any university, pretty much most, most major universities Oops, I think I just got lost. Um, <clears throat> another group called uh, Brasileiros in Purdue, so it's a little, it's a little more informal, but uh, there's always, you know, groups, Facebook groups, and Brazilians who are very, very open. To uh, to speaking with you and giving you information because it's good to have uh, you know a local 
you know, contact. Uh, look, they even have a Samba workshop. Look at that. Okay. So again, uh, just want to make you know, make sure you know that there's lots of resources to help you keep, you know, learn more about any university that you want. And sometimes it's easier, obviously, to speak in Portuguese or talk to Brazilian to understand how it was to move there. Okay. So uh, I just want to thank uh, Danek for your time. That was really great. Um, you know, it's the first of, of a series of webinars. So I thank you very much for your time. Um, is there anything else that, that you wanted to say before we sign off here? Are you guys hearing me? Okay. Oh, you're muted. Hold on. Let me unmute you. Uh, any final words before we sign off tonight? Is that yeah. good? Yeah, I'm good. I think those were all good points. And again, yeah, you made a good point about Brasa. And if you want to ever talk to a current uh, Purdue Brazilian student, um, I know a few of them are involved with Brasa, and I can easily get you in contact with them. Great. Um, that's always an opportunity for um, as you're considering Purdue and you know learning a little bit about those students' experiences and what it's like. I think that's a always a wise decision when you're getting down to making that final decision of uh, which school would be a best fit for me or not. Yeah, talk to the current student sense of it, their experience and what they think and like about it and see if you can see yourself in their shoes. If you can, that's awesome. I think that would be a good fit for you. If you can't, then that's always, so again, it's about finding the, that right fit, um, which will help you, I think, be successful. Great. Thank you. Right. Thank you, everyone, for signing on tonight. This is recorded, so if you miss something or if you want to watch it again, uh, I'm going to post it very soon on our YouTube channel. Thank you, everyone. Good night. All right. Good night.